In a sea of despair after this horrendous attack, there was a glimmer of hope that developed within the Pittsburgh religious community. Representatives from many faith groups uniting to fight back against religious bigotry. To talk about that, we're joined by two guests at the forefront of this interfaith effort to combat religious intolerance. Alan Hausman is the president of the Tree of Life Congregation, one of three Jewish congregations which lost worshipers in the shooting. And Bishop David Zubik leads the Catholic Diocese of Pittsburgh. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us for this important discussion. Mr. Hausman, your synagogue received an outpouring of support from other faith communities, Protestants, Catholics, Muslims, Sikhs, and more. What was it like to see that kind of response from the greater Pittsburgh community? As a lifelong Pittsburgh resident, uh, Pittsburgh is a big, small town, and we always support each other. But it was at first a little overwhelming to see the support th that we received. We, they weren't standing behind us. Uh, they were standing with us, shoulder to shoulder, hand to hand, arm to arm. And I get asked all the time, what were all the religious communities that supported you? And I always tell people the shorter list is who did not support mm -hmm. us because every community did. And we've established some really tremendous long-term relationships with all of these other communities. That's beautiful to hear. And we have Bishop Zubik, one of your allies. Bishop, after the shooting, you openly denounced anti-Jewish bigotry and asked the faithful to pray for their Jewish brothers and sisters. How else did your diocese reach out to the synagogue and put prayer into action? Uh, certainly in the days that followed the massacre, uh, you know, we invited all of the members of our uh, diocese uh, to join in prayer for the Jewish community. But uh, we always wanted to make sure that we were present to the Jewish community in many ways. You know, there's a long history of a, of a beautiful relationship between the Jewish people and Catholics in our area going back to the early 1960s. Uh, uh, Dr. Freehoff, who was the rabbi at one of the other uh, uh, temples in, in, the, in the area, and then uh, Bishop John Wright, who was Bishop of Pittsburgh at that time, forged a wonderful relationship. And over the course of all of these 60 plus years, that relationship has only continued to deepen. And I'm just very grateful to all of our Jewish brothers and sisters for the ways in which that cooperation has made us a richer church as well, too, rich in terms of celebration of faith and also a deeper appreciation of the differences that exist between us. And it seems great friendship. Mr. Hausman, we're almost five years out from this tragedy. How have you seen the Tree of Life congregation move forward and find healing and resi resilience? Well, it, it's, it's certainly not easy. Um, some people say that time heals all wounds. And I would tell you that time allows you to learn how to deal with the grief. It never really heals. And our relationship um, with these other faiths from around the world uh, has, uh, has really helped us. It's, it's very uh, helpful on a Saturday morning, a Shabbat service, when someone comes up and says, I'm in Pittsburgh for, and I just felt I had to come and be with you. Or at Christmas, when we go join the other faiths, or at Hanukkah and Purim, where they all come and join us in the celebrations, we are no longer separate faiths. We are one. And on a weekly basis, we may worship slightly differently. But at the end of the day, we are one people and we are united in our thought that of, of peace and love for one another. That's beautiful. Now, Bishop Zubik, you mentioned that these interfaith relationships existed in Pittsburgh long before the 2018 massacre. How have you kept that alive? Uh, well, a good example is that on October 22nd of this year, um, we're going to have a special service at our cathedral, uh, 2.30 in the afternoon to mark the fifth anniversary of the massacre. Several months ago, I called Rabbi Myers and asked, you know, what his thoughts might be on that. He said he felt it was really important for him to also uh, share that request with the families of the 11 who were, who were killed. Uh, and came back with a you know, resounding appreciation for the fact that, that we're going to be gathering together at our cathedral you know, with people of uh, different faiths and even with people uh, who have no faith at all. Th there's something about Pittsburgh that really wants to come together to, to support um, each other. And I think this is going to be another powerful example of us being able to do that, uh, you know, marking the tragic anniversary. 
an important thing to do. Now, Mr. Houseman, a report from the Anti-Defamation League says that anti-Semitic attacks are on the rise across the U.S. What do you think is the solution to this rise, and how can other faith communities play a part in the solution? Do you have a position on, on, on what might be a good, a good way forward? I always try to explain to people that the word we need to think about when dealing with people is acceptance. Some people use the word tolerance, and, and I disagree with that. The word is acceptance. We need to learn to accept people for who and what they are. If they worship differently, dress differently, look differently, that really doesn't matter. The only thing that matters when we look at other people is their behavior and their behavior to us. And we've had a you know, over the years, as the bishop said, a great relationship with these other religions. And we, we learn who they are, we understand who they are, and now we are friends because we realize that there really is no difference. We are all the same people. We may speak a different language when we worship. We may go to a different uh, type of uh, temple or, or uh, cathedral. We may worship on a different day, but at the bottom line is we really say the same things to our God. And the more we could sit down with people, we could open up a dialogue and get to know one another, the less chance we have of these uh, unusual and bizarre thoughts that come to people without even knowing who they're talking about. And these unusual and bizarre thoughts have manifested themselves in violence. A question for both of you, starting with you, Mr. Houseman. What do you think about armed guards outside of places of worship and, and making sure that that's there? There's some legislation that has been proposed on that. What are your thoughts on that as a way to safeguard religious communities? Unfortunately, it has become a way of life, especially in the Jewish community. Uh, you see it throughout this country, throughout the world. Uh, we have now become used to it. If we attend services that does not have appropriate security, our members are um, nervous and they're, they're generally concerned. Uh, it's going to take a long time to our congregants and people feel safe again. This is, uh, you know, this attack is going to be on everyone's mind for a very long time. Now, Bishop Zubik, what about you? The Catholic community has also suffered uh, vandalism, et cetera. How do you feel about protecting your worshipers with armed guards? You know, I think this has become a challenge that every leader faces, both religious leaders and, and beyond, uh, to provide for the safety of all of our people. And certainly we're, we're looking at continuing to increase uh, opportunities to protect uh, our people. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, the, it's the line of the day, and I think we have to be able to, to look for ways that we can protect each other. I think one of the things that, um, that that's so important to remember, and one of my favorite lines in, in the Old Testament is, is where we say that we are the apple of God's eye. And unfortunately, we, we've forgotten that. The, the face of God really does exist in each one of us. There can be no room for bigotry or any kind of prejudice. And it seems to me that the two things that, that can uh, be steps to uh, remove those kinds of attitudes are empathy and, and the capacity to listen. You know, empathy means that we put ourselves in the shoes of the other person we treat each other as we want to be treated. But the second thing is, it's so important for us to be able to listen to each other. You know, I always say there's a difference between hearing and listening. Hearing is a biological process where we take in information. Uh, listening means that we take it in within our hearts. And I think uh, if we can learn that as a lesson as a global community, then, you know, maybe we can uh, uh, t turn the tide uh, that exists, uh, you know, amongst uh, and between uh, people who are different. Now, Bishop Zubik, some quick additional guidance for pastoral guidance for us. We're coming up on 60 years since the Vatican II released Nostra Tate letter outlining how Catholics should view interfaith collaboration and our relationship to Judaism. Why is it important for Catholics to build these interfaith bridges and support our Jewish brothers and sisters? Well, I think that's the challenge that Jesus gave us. You know, uh, the very last words that he spoke when, before he sent it into heaven was, you go out now and, and make disciples of all the nations. 
Uh, and in part of what uh, you know, the Second Vatican Council called us to do is to to realize that uh, every person that we're with, uh, no matter what their religion is, uh, and especially with regard to our Jewish sisters and brothers, we need to be able to to see them as they really are, our sisters and our brothers. So uh, this coming um, uh, anniversary really uh, is a reminder to us that we best not forget that charge that goes beyond what the Second Vatican Council asked of us, but to realize that for us as Christians, that's what Jesus calls us to. That's beautiful. Well, thank you both for your courage and your leadership and, of course, your time. Thank you very much. Good to be with you.